this is not survive this is not a look this is just not a moment i'm just not hi hello welcome back to my channel today we're doing a girl tour girl talk videos are my faves so today we are doing a girl talk we're also trying a whole bunch the state of my table right now a whole bunch of new products oh spoiler some will not be getting Oh, I don't know guys, all I have to say is Milk Hydro Grip is not that girl. It's not the girl you're trying to make her, please just leave her. I'm gonna do this blue eyeshadow, which I've done on pretty much all of my other social media channels and never on here. It's really easy, I'll show you how guys how to do it. You can do it with any colour, mix and blend, any colour you want to do it with. I did it with blue because I just think blue is so electric on black skin. Like, look at it. Absolutely sensational. I really, really hope you guys love today's video. There is so many topics we covered today. One of them was kind of out of my depth, so I throw it to you guys. So make sure you watch it, give me your thoughts. If you've tried any of these products that I've tried, let me know what you think. Because a couple of these men are never coming in rotation ever again, okay? <laughs> anyway, enjoy the video, guys. For once, I'm starting with my brows already done, more laminated. I use this new one from a lot of new products as I said in today. So every other product is basically gonna be like, I used a new one. This is the Makeup by Mario Master Hole Brow Gel. And guys, when I tell you it feels like brows have been glued down, I don't know if you can tell, they actually like, it's not moving. That's absolutely crazy. Milk Hydro Grip, it's been a long, 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 long time since I've used this. I've also got the Vanish Airbrush Primer from Hourglass. I'm like, which one should I use? Let's use the milk one because I feel that more people would have this. Let me just pump it into my hands. Oh, it's new, so ooh. From my memory, this is like a silicone-y, silicone texture. And apparently this keeps your makeup on for ages. Now, it's annoying because it's the evening, so I'm not really testing longevity with these products i'll just tell you how they're fitting on my skin i'll tell you like my first impressions and if i've used them before i will tell you how i've been finding it so that's going to be the vibe milk also have like a hydro grip set and refresh spray which i have never seen this but i think it must be new so it was sent in the pack with this and like a whole bunch of other new. We've also got the Nima setting spray. Oh, there's so much newness, so much. Okay, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna be answering you guys' this question, my hair. I fear, I fear I've, you know, put too much on my plate and am I going to be able to answer these questions and talk about the products? But one thing about me, I'm a rise to a challenge. I can't sing either, so there's that. Girl talk scenarios. Ooh, been dating, been out of the dating scene for a hot minute. Any tips on how to navigate these streaks? Babe, listen, let me just clean my brows up. Remember when I used to use this all the time? The soft matte concealer from NARS. I used to rinse that all the time. So I've been using a combination of that and also just the Too Faced one. So I just use this on top. It's very, very close to my skin tone. It's practically undetectable. Navigating these streaks, I'm not gonna lie guys, it's a jungle. The folks that are unserious, but like masking are serious. And then there's the folks that wanna be serious, but you know, they're too busy concerned about what people will think or people will say. It's just, obviously I can only speak for London, but it's just a mess out there, guys. Honestly, I genuinely, like my single friends are going through it. I say all of this, but people are finding love in the streets. Like people are finding love, people are getting engaged. And one thing I found in common with all the people that have settled down in recent years, I say that like the last year, year and a half, they're just intentional. I feel like you have to be so, so intentional. And intentional also looks like not letting people waste your time when you know that there is nothing there. And sometimes it's so easy for us to get carried away and like, oh, let me just entertain this one. There's no one else around. That space that you could be occupying for someone else, you've got someone, someone just there wasting your time. And I'll be honest, it is easier for some people than it is for others. Let me just turn my light on, it's a bit dark. Yes, as I was saying, it is easier for some people than it is for others. Some people just, get really lucky in dating. I don't know if you can say that. They get really lucky in dating. They don't tend to stay single for too long if they don't want to. When they're ready, there's typically available suitors that match their type and are ready. Others, it takes a bit more time. And I actually, when I was scrolling through it, I saw a question that someone that was basically saying they were worried because they'd never had a boyfriend before. I think they said they were like 27 or something like that. And I don't think that's that abnormal, honestly. Like I have friends that have never been in relationships. I think a lot of people hold themselves to like online standards 
And people online don't even hold themselves to those standards, but they perpetuate them so much online. That's why it's so, so important to talk to real people about their real relationships, like real people around you. Ask them about marriage, ask them about love, ask them about relationships. Get honest about what you want for yourself and then don't accept anything outside of that because you're just gonna waste your own time. You're just gonna get frustrated with yourself. You're gonna get frustrated with people out there and then you're gonna just look back and think, why did I waste my time on people? On useless people that had no intention of doing anything with me. You guys know I'm an advocate for just, when it comes to dating, grabbing it with both hands. I really do not subscribe to like the passive dating notion. If you see it and you want it, go get it. But you can only go get it so far. If you feel like you're going to get it and you're not getting much back, take that, move on. But don't be afraid to go get it. Don't be afraid to put yourself in situations or talk to people. Women, we love to do the whole staring at them and that's us shooting our shot. <laughs> I know y'all like to do it, but I do think sometimes you have to be more intentional with dating and that means sometimes you have to be forward. If you're a confident person, that wouldn't be too difficult for you. If you're not as confident, that might be something that you struggle with. And I'm not saying go and do a madness, but don't be afraid to put yourself out there a little bit more than you would have done in the past, basically. In essence, that's that's my little bit of advice. I don't know if that's good advice. I think it actually, when I was single, people in relationships give you advice based on like when they were dating. And the dating scene, I feel, moves so quickly, especially if you, you know, or single through the pandemic or you're single post pandemic. It's such a different, it's still a madness. No, the madness is kind of consistent. I was trying to do contrast, compare, but the madness is still kind of consistent. If anything, before the pandemic, more people were mad. And now after the pandemic, less people are mad because they're relationships, but the ones that are mad are like way more brazen with it. So don't you feel like men these days wanna be bad bees so bad? And I say that to say that I'm a traditional babe. I wanna be chased, I wanna be courted. Don't get me wrong, it's not gonna be one-sided. You will also feel my interests. But I feel like men these days wanna be bad bees so bad. Like men wanna be treated and chased and courted so bad. Like damn, little Miss Princess, like what's really happening here? That has been a shocker to me. Men really, really are waiting for like women to basically do everything. Prime brows, oh brows are looking good. I'm not gonna lie, when I first put this on I wasn't sure, but it's just set down so quick. And I know it's not the thin brow, thin brow is so, you know, thin brow, thin brown. I might make this a little bit thinner actually. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make these a little bit thinner. Just a tiny bit. Lol, someone said, why do I only attract unserious men? I don't know if I have, I have advice for that one. I don't know. What did they say? You are what you attract? I don't actually believe that one. So let me not even stop perpetuating lies. Hmm, should we do eyes first or should we do base. I kind of want to do eyes first. I've done this eye look on TikTok. I've even done it on TikTok. I've done it on Instagram. I'm sure I've posted it on Twitter and I've never done it on here before. Shameful blue. It's very simple. It's so iconic. And what's really, really good about it is you can essentially chop and change it for different colors. So if you have a yellow or orange or red or a lilac, it looks so good with lilac. So I'm going to mix these two. They're both in P. Louise. This is the P. Louise base in, sorry, my thumbnail's broken as well. I'm not getting it done until Friday. This is in Banging Blue. So I'm mixing this P. Louise eye base. Got my little plates. Mixing the P. Louise eye base in Banging Blue with Acid Rain with Mimi Mitchell. It's their collaboration. This is in Nitro. Gorgeous. And that's what it looks like. You can't really, it looks very, very, um, probably truer to what it looks like. It looks very washed out if I bring it too close. And I'm just gonna take this color. Oh, that's stunning. I'm just gonna put it on the lid. You really don't even need too much of it because we're about to blend it out. So the brush I just used is from Mima Cosmetics, Marion's brand, I used 05 and now I'm taking 04 just to really go out and blend it out. And as I said, you can use this with any color. I like the P. Louise bases, but honestly you can use any cream eyeshadows. And I like to place it on my lid first and then pack it through and like slowly fade it up. Like so. I actually want mine slightly winged. 
don't do too much because we're going to be using eyeshadow so just also know that the eyeshadow can also be used to add shape if you leave it a bit longer to dry down it's easier to work with it definitely moves around less actually while i'm doing that i'm going to pack a bit more color on here just a tiny bit more so that when we do come back oh that color is so rich when we do come back after blending this eye we are in a good position to diffuse but still maintain intensity i can't believe this is the first time i'm doing this on youtube this is such a stunning stunning look oh how to get over your friendship breakups with friends who don't want to address the elephant in the room oh that's a good one do you know what i'll be really transparent I haven't always been the best with conflict in friendships. Admittedly, I do find it difficult sometimes to have really, really tough conversations, especially if it feels like it's not necessarily like the first time an issue has come up. So I'm not sure what the situation is within your friendship group. Sometimes in friendships, it's easier to have fresh conversations about new things. I'm more likely to just pull someone up on one time thing. And I was saying this to my old therapist. I was basically saying that if I pulled someone up on something several times after a while i just stop bringing it up it affects the friendship essentially because if you don't feel safe enough in a friendship to even if you say a hundred times you don't if you don't feel safe enough in a friendship to express certain things that's really going to impact your dynamic of that person if you are in a position to be bring it up and be like hey guys this is the issue or hey i know no one's really trying to talk about it i know it's a different com it's a difficult conversation to have but i do feel like this is something that needs to be discussed and this is something that we need to speak about. If you are in a position to do that, I would say do so. Because the thing about friendship is sometimes something little, if it doesn't get spoken about, if it doesn't get sorted, it can just lead to bigger, bigger, bigger problems. And then all of a sudden, it's like something that was so little and so easy to kind of get over has caused a massive riff. The question is how to get over it. You can't get over something that's not been dealt with. So my first advice would be to you straight off the bat, you need to speak to someone about it. Whether someone in the group or someone in your, in someone around you who you can basically, fully transparent, when we, when we tell stories, you know, when we are relaying incidences, we like to admit stuff. If you're gonna ask someone for advice, you've gotta be super transparent in the sense of, this is where I messed up, and this is where I feel like the other person could have also done better. How do you think I should navigate this? Get an outsider's perspective, because sometimes it's like, no, you know what, you've done enough, so, if the situation is to get sorted, the other person kind of has to come to you. And sometimes it's like, do you know what? Put your pride aside. If this friendship is really worth something to you, make that effort to go and like speak to that person. Sometimes people just need a bit of time to kind of move past it. And then they can be, it can be spoken about later. I don't think I've spoken to a single person in the past six months that hasn't said, yeah, in at least one of my friendship groups, there is a madness going on. Whew. I don't know if it's because we're at that age or I don't know. You don't have to, and I don't know if I will, but if you haven't already, if you're just watching this practice in, you can also just add a transition color. I didn't add one, and I don't know if it's too late to add one, but you know what I will add? I've just realized I didn't set my eyelids. That's crazy. I almost always set my eyelids. But maybe because I was using cream, it didn't feel like there was resistance. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let me go right ahead and set like the space. I'm using this Makeup Ariel Morphe brush in A14. I'm just gonna set this negative space between here, because I'm about to go plop some eyeshadow on. But I just wanna make sure this is nice and set. Pack a shade of brush for this, by the way. Oh my God, this color is gorgeous. So we're gonna add a wing with our eyeliner as well. So I just want a good... So I'm gonna do an actual wing and then do an inner corner wing because I love an inner corner wing, I love it. Okay, while we're doing that, lol, can you tell us where to find all the kind financially stable men in the UK? Because I can't find them, sis. I feel like they're all gone. <laughs> if I'm keeping it a buck, I feel like they're gone. The ones that aren't gone are just not in the space to settle down. Market is tight. I'm just putting this in, the, in a corner to do my usual. A London space would really benefit from a dating mixer or, or something of the sort. 
where people can really come and if you're interested only if you're interested in relationships not if you're interested in hookups just really come and meet your babes because even on nights out anymore, I just don't feel like nights out are what they used to be. I mean, maybe because I'm in a relationship. People aren't really talking about meeting people on nights out like they used to. Actually, even pre-pandemic, it's been a while since one of my friends met someone on a night out and it actually went anywhere. Let me do the wing liner first. You guys can watch and then I'll continue answering questions after. I'm wondering if I want to make these wings bigger, if they're big enough. I feel like they're pretty slick. But there's always room for me. I feel like this one's a bit... Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these wings real quick. I believe this is the one I used. I couldn't remember the shade that I used, annoyingly. I used this on Instagram. Now I just can't remember the shade I used. Gosh, now there's a whole bunch. So I'm using the Boing Cakeless Concealer from Benefit in number nine. Boing. On points. Let's go ahead and do the base. Now the base needs to be flawless guys. Please, 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 please. That's what I'm going for. I might actually use this. This is the, hmm. Do you know what I've actually really, really been loving? I've been loving the new NARS foundation. I mixed the new NARS foundation with the soft matte. It was delicious. This new one on its own is, I'll show you what it looks like. It's really, really nice. Don't need too much of it. But also you can build it up and it still looks lush. So that's two pumps. The coverage surprised me because I wasn't expecting it to have coverage. Because the way it's marketed, it's not marketed like it's gonna have coverage, but it really does. These hairs gotta go. <laughs> Y'all gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. Look, isn't that stunning? Let me even get my sponge to pick up any excess, but it looks so good. It looks so, so good. The shade match is lovely as always. I really do like my shade match in NARS, but I really like this foundation. I really surprised me, honestly, guys. They were talking about skin like, skin like. Remember last video, I was like, skin like, skin like, and then actually looks really pretty. I'm pleasantly very, very surprised, but I'm actually gonna mix it with a tiny bit of the um, soft matte, just because I love this formula, it's so nice. You know, blend it out, a little mix and blend. And then using my foundation brush to just so the new NARS foundation, I've been using it non-stop. It has coverage and it's buildable. It's actually kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin or the Clinique Clinical Serum Foundation, if you have any of those. Stunning. And I'm actually gonna use a tiny bit of that Benefit Concealer, nine on point. This is the Cakeless Concealer, their new one. I'm just gonna pop this on the inside. So I used this on Instagram or maybe TikTok, one of those, and people really, really loved it, but I couldn't remember my shade. I have a habit of doing that, but this is very, very nice. Very good coverage. I actually popped it on the back of my hand and then used the same Bare Minerals Max Coverage Concealer Brush to apply. Really, really like this. You can just use it straight onto the face, by the way. I'm just being extra today. Career advice. Oh, whenever people ask me about career advice, I'm like, Ooh, maybe I'll do a separate video on that one actually and we can talk about um, entrepreneurial career and business and stuff like that. Just because I don't, that's quite a vague question, career advice. I don't know if you're in my field, I don't know if you're thinking about going into a new field. I feel like a lot of people at the moment are retraining to go into new fields, which I think is just amazing because I'm chief minister, chief advocate of you can fulfill many passions in one life. So I feel like you have to box yourself into one field into one passion for your whole life. How boring would life be? And we're such a good place, our generation, especially if you're first generation like me. I'm not, am I even first generation? I wasn't even born in this country, am I first generation? I would say I was first generation, I grew up here, so I'm looking for my spray right now. Yeah, I would say I'm first generation. I wasn't born here, but I came super, super young anyway. So yeah, you could technically say I'm first generation. A lot of us first generation, our parents have done a lot to give us that 
privilege of being able to go after what we want and do what we want so what a shame it would be for your parents to go through all of that and set you up so well only for you not to just maximize your potential so if you feel like do you know what i feel like i've reached my ceiling or i feel like i've reached where i am in this field retrain do something else don't feel like you have to box yourself. I'm using a little bit of my Jouer concealer. You guys know I love this to add some additional brightness. And I feel kind of bad for using this because number one, it's sold out. And number two, it just doesn't go that deep. Like it's so annoying. It just, there's no depth in this range whatsoever. The blushes are exciting. There's new ones from Huda Beauty, which we'll be trying today. That's exciting. Right, let's grab another question. I'm so introverted, but I want to go out and start meeting people. Where do I start? Oh, that's a good question. I also feel like the pandemic has kind of changed people's personality type. People have a lot more anxiety going out nowadays. Oh, I just love it. Look at the way it blends into skin. Stop. Stop. Honestly, if you have any outgoing friends, I would say go out with them, see what they do and how they talk to people. Being introverted is very hard to just... I just feel like when someone's like, oh, I'm introverted, I actually don't think it's as easy to be like, oh, just talk to people because it's not really like, well, if it was that easy, I would be talking to people. Clearly, I get anxiety talking to people. But I would say is listen to podcasts because there's so many podcasts and so many shows that talk about so many things. Like the other day, guys, I was listening to a podcast about, it was Brene Brown, I can't remember the guest name, but they were talking about attention, focus and presence and it was such a good podcast episode. I'll leave it linked down below, but oftentimes when I am running into issues or if I feel like I need advice on something, I'll see if there's a interview about it or a documentary or a podcast because for me, there is something about hearing someone else who is similar, speak about. I'm a very tips and techniques, tips and techniques. I need tips and tricks, okay? Practical tips and things to do. So when I was listening to that podcast about focus, attention and presence, something that came up time and time again was mindfulness and practicing meditation, which comes up a lot anyway. And when people are struggling to be present and to be focused, that's always something that comes up in the conversation. I'm not necessarily someone that is always quick to make conversation. However, if you put me in so certain social circumstances, I can fake a confident, quiet one side of me and just be like, oh, just, just do what you need to do. Not always, but sometimes I'm just, okay, just start, strike off conversation, just do what you need to do. But I find that difficult and I have a social element in me that kind of pushes me to do that. So if you're someone that's super introverted, faking it is just not a good enough tip. My tip to you, honestly, see if you can find podcasts or shows that talk about being introvert, any exercises that you can do at home. So my friend put on a bent and someone came at the end and was just talking about, you know, networking and she had a really good like rule of three, which basically was make sure you talk to three people, get two contacts and then meet up with one person. Saying that you wanna go out and start meeting people. So yeah, maybe it's like a talk to three people, make sure you get two of their names, well get all of their names, but try and remember two of their names and then one person maybe follow them and like ask to catch up. Or you can use the rule of three that she gave to me, which was talk to three people, get two people's details and meet up with one person, which mine was for business, but that can also be used for a social setting as well. And then slowly, slowly you'll start building like your network of friends. I'm not sure how old you are, but a lot of people that I know that are 30 gang, that kind of age, they have so, they know a lot of people because they started going out from young. So they started meeting people when they were young. So now they just know so many people, but that's just from years of building up connections. So that's what I would say to you. Don't try and make all the friends in the world in one day. and Don't try and meet everyone in the world in one day. And also don't try and force connections with people just for the sake of having people. Oh, sorry guys, I'm blending up my concealer. Um, sometimes it's like a, you were cool to talk to, but we don't really have much in common, so there's no need for us to follow each other. If I see you again, it's a hey thing. If I don't, I don't. There's some people I've been saying hey, 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 hey to for like five years. London going out circle, there's some people I say hi to. I don't even remember when I met them, but I know that I'm cool with them. Some of them, I don't even know their faces, but I know that I'm cool enough for you to say hi. Definitely levels of connections. So don't feel like everyone needs to, that you meet needs to be your close friends. Or you have friends that are outgoing, definitely be like, Oh, you know, like I saw you guys went to this, next time you go, let me know, I'd love to go. Friends I have from school, that sometimes we just meet up just to go to things that we have in common. A lot of my school friends that have quite different interests from like my uni friends. So I still like to tap into like certain parts of myself that, you know, certain friendship groups might not necessarily fulfill. I love camping, sleeping over festivals. And when I want to do stuff like that, that's my secondary school friends. Like my uni friends, I think some of them will now. Like my group of friends now post, you know, some of them will now, but 
if I want to camp and go for a camping festival, do a festival, or do like a lost village, I already know I'm hitting up my secondary school friends and we're gonna have a vibe because they're on what I'm on. I'm not really on. You know, if someone's interested, I'd be like, oh my God, yeah, come through. But I'm not really on forcing people to do stuff that they don't want to do because then it's not going to be fun for you. And then I've got to like, ugh, no. One friend doesn't have to fulfill everything. So when you're meeting people, just keep in mind that, you know, this might just be someone that I always just see when I'm out. And this might be someone that I really, you know, build a real friendship with and we really get to talk about things. That's the longest I've let my concealer dry down. And actually, I really like the way it looks. It's a bit, you know, dry, dry, like, this bitch is dry, but I kind of like it. So I hope that advice was helpful. I'm not sure that it was, but I hope it was. Today I'm gonna mix these two blushes. So this is the new blushes from Huda Beauty. They're called Cheeky Tints, they're blush sticks. So we've got Rebel Red and Perky Peachy. And I thought these would go so nicely together. So I'm gonna just blend them in in my hand because I wanted more of like a light pink flush, but this Perky Peachy is not pigment. I don't know that it's not pigmented enough, but basically I just needed, I want to mix it so it's more of this color. Do you see? Flush of color on me. That I wouldn't necessarily get just using this on its own. It's not going to give me that because I'm black. So that's why I added a little bit of the Rebel Red to give it a little bit of depth. And I think it looks so lovely. It's like a rosy. I've been watching Bridgerton, no spoilers obviously, but Oh, the rosy pink cheeks they've been doing on the South Asian girls. Stunning. I need to know what blush they used because it looks so freaking good. You know how hard it is to get that rosy pink color on not white skin, basically. I need to know what they used, please, to keep the same pigment intensity. This is actually pretty cute. I always feel like my advice doesn't really help, but I really hope that helps. And sometimes I just like to go back in and mix a little bit of the contour back into it. I don't know guys, I'm a complex human being because why did I just do all that brush to go add some contour? I don't know. Let's set the under eye and do all the powders. How to make the best out of uni in 22, it's not really the, 2022, it's not really the same these days. Guys, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea about anything to do with uni. I am 27 years old. I, even like my my cousins, one of my cousins is in, um, I wanna say this man is in first year, is he in second year? I don't even bloody know. I think, yeah, I think he's, one of my cousins is in sec second year. My other cousin is doing like her second degree. So, uh, bruh, I don't know. My cousin is, seems to be living life, but you know guys can have fun anywhere. One thing white men, they can have fun anywhere, but my little cousin, my other cousin, who's gone in for her second degree is, she's studying medicine, she's not there, and this is her second degree, she's not there to play games. Yeah, I really don't know, but if anyone is in uni and has any advice, then definitely leave it in the comments. I don't mind asking questions on your behalf, but I personally have not a clue. And I'm okay saying that. More people need to get okay with saying, I don't know. Sometimes, I actually don't know. <laughs> um, that's okay. Life post-education and finding your way in the world as a black girl. Ooh, baby. Let me set my face. This needs attention in this one. Okay, I just sprayed my face down with my airbrush. This is the best and I want a flawless base. So I'm gonna have to use this in some way because I didn't use my Fenty Primer. My Fenty Primer and my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush always give me such a flawless base. Like, I had to do something. But hold tight, Milk Hydro Grip because I know you're in there doing something, but you know, no one's too proud to have help including primers and setting sprays, okay? Finding your way in the world as a black girl, post-education. <sighs> it's a tough one. It depends what you're like, to be honest, and like who you're around, what you're around. I, you know, I grew up around white people, pretty much. I wasn't really around outside of family, of course, but we're talking about just like friends, a hell of white people until I was, 18 and then uni was the first time I was really around a lot of ethnics. My uni was very ethnic. <laughs> hella Asians, hella black people, obviously white people as well, but there was hella Asians, hella black people. Interestingly enough, was like a shock to me because I was so used to being around white people. So I don't know if I've ever spoken about this on my channel. So there was definitely like my persona pre-uni and then my persona post uni which is why I need to this is why I need to have like my secondary school friends and pre-uni friends not to say all my all my pre-uni friends aren't white 
a lot of them are. But I had black friends in in school as well. So I like having my pre-uni friends because they really keep that part of me alive and they really give me the space to just really be that part of me but then also my post uni friends also give me the space to be that part of me even like the way i talk if you go back and watch like my old videos before i went to uni <laughs> a bitch was blowing english yeah yeah it was really giving queen's english but then obviously i got a little flavor got a little flavor of being in uni i think any black person that grew up around a lot of white people I don't want to speak for everyone, but most black people that grew up around a lot of white people, we all kind of have that. We have that. I say that to say, finding your way is a very personal thing and your way is what feels authentic and right to you. So for me, I have two, three parts of myself. And in order to feel like I'm navigating the world in my way, I need to always feel like I am staying true to every single part of me. Oftentimes people make it seem like you can't be all of them at once, like you can only be, this has to be you. Like, no, you can't be that, that and that, this has to be. And it's like, no, sometimes I can be a couple things, like multifaceted, get with it. The first step to finding your way in the world is knowing who you are. If you don't know who you are, any little wind is gonna blow you basically. So the first step is knowing who you are and getting comfortable with who you are. Let me add some bronzers and powders because uh, I'm just talking. I say getting comfortable to say people love to tell people about themselves. So you need to get into a space where no one knows you better than you. So that anything that comes, anyone that tries a ting or anyone that tries to do, no, 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 you're not going to do it like that because I already know who I am. So it becomes easier to find your way when you know where home is, you know, what feels right for you, you're sure about your decisions and like the people you're hanging around with and the people that you're allowing in your life. Also the way that you're showing up for other people is very important as well. And the thing about education is, education, school, it gives you structure. There is no structure in the real life and that comes right down to like your dynamics. School, you know you're gonna see your friends at school. You go home, you know you're gonna, your parents are gonna be at home, your siblings are gonna be at home. Post, uni, Say you live at home, at least you've got that element of, you know your parents and your siblings are gonna be at home. If you move out, that's another additional layer of, as I'm navigating myself, I need to remember to do my check-ins. I need to remember that in self-discovery also comes community. No one is an island on their own. While you're discovering yourself, don't forget the people around you. And I'm very guilty of this, you know. I can get in my busyness and forget to check in and forget to do this because at the end of the day, your people keep you grounded and your keep, people keep you. So you can go explore all the world, but it's important to have people around you as well. And part of discovering yourself is also having people that give you the space to grow yourself is very important. You need to be able to lean on people. People need to be able to lean on you. That is the entire essence of life. So I feel like I've said everything but nothing at all. And I hope that that's helped. But honestly, a lot of life after uni is trial and error and falling over and leaning on people and people leaning on you. And it's beautiful because you're all navigating it together. If you have friends that are the same age as you, great, because you're all navigating it together. And you also that community, it makes you feel so normal. Because sometimes I go through shit and I'm like, damn, like, is it just me? And I'll like speak to my friend and like, they kind of affirm. Part of navigating yourself is not beating yourself up about things that don't go well and things are out of your control. Because a lot of things post uni, the lack of structure, it's like anarchy. It is carnage. Sometimes it just feels like your life is just, hopefully you found some sort of something from that. I really hope so. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this exhibit A blush from NARS. This is such an oldie but a goodie. God, I haven't heard anyone say that in a while, oldie but a goodie. Very little of this. It is so pigmented. Like, look at it. Honestly, sometimes I'm like, you don't need powder and cream blush. Do you know that? You know that? My skin isn't really given the flawlessness that it usually does. Listen, no other primer gives you that. This is what gives you that. Y'all think I'm joking? Let me use the Fix Set and Forget It setting spray from Nimia. This is Nikki Tutorial's brand. It's kindly sent over from Cult Beauty. Wow, that spray is powerful. Okay, here we go. Mmm, interesting scent. I wasn't expecting that to have a scent. Okay, that's that's done. Now let me put some lashes on. 
Might put these on, might go a bit extra today. I have not missed having to turn on a damn hot comb. Let me just tell you that. Let me tell you that for free. Oh, I kind of like that setting spray. Kind of like the way that's made my skin look. I don't even remember this hair being bad at holding curls, but I've just watched every single curl I've put in this hair drop right in front of my eyes. Can you believe I just curled this hair? It's practically straight. It is practically bone straight. Cha anyway, let me just do my brows because at this point I need some sort of burst of happiness that I'm hoping is gonna come from the brows. Because why did that just happen? Guys, I just spent a whole, a whole minute, you know, a while curling this damn hair. I haven't added some layers into it. Ooh, this is an interesting texture. This brow gel from Makeup by Mario is, can you hear that? Glued down, okay. Your brows aren't going anywhere. Maybe it's to be used like after, because the product isn't really sitting on it very well either. But I think it's more of like a use it after your brows, after you're done with your brows vibe. But then it's to laminate, so then surely it'll just like mix up with the product. I don't know. I don't know guys, let me add some jet black actually, because this hair is jet black. I have to remember to make the brows slightly darker as well to keep up with that. Lord, I don't know what's going on. Just on vibes. Brushing it like the brows aren't laminated, like the brows are glued down shut. I'm not obsessed with this face today, but this is decaf by the way, it's evening. I might reconsider, you know, I might reconsider when I have done my lip combo. I might feel differently. Let's do the lips, okay, let's do the lips. I'm gonna try a new lip combo. Is this really the day to be trying a new lip combo? I'm already not feeling my look. Let's do it, okay? I would urge you to reconsider. Where's that from? I'm just using this lip liner from ABH in Malt. The next one is, let me line my lips first. So I went to my parents' house to get like a load of my PR. And Avia just sent all of their lip liners and all of their lipsticks. So I thought, you know what, let me give it a little, a little whirl. Now that's one thing about their lip liner. It's like, the tone is just a bit off. That's why I just always stick to MAC. I feel like the tone looks off on me, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bugging. See the difference? This is more like the MAC one, MAC Cork, True Brown. I don't know, I just feel like all the other ones that say they are have like a hint of purple. Or like mauve. I don't know, something about them always throws me off. Anyway, I've switched back to MAC because, bruh. What I really like the look of is this lip gloss. It was sent to me from Cop Beauty, I believe. It's from Tower 28. I always see so many people talking about their products and they really like them. So here's hoping they work for me too. Let's give it a little, well, I don't know. I, guys, I literally can't believe this. I have to remember this one when I'm getting ready, that the curls, it's like the frontal is the only thing that's holding the curl. That's crazy. Let me put lipstick underneath. I'm gonna put Butterscotch from ABH. Very light and scary. I don't mind a light and scary because they always blend up really nicely. And I'm using a gloss anyway. They just always blend up to be like the nicest bit of color on your lip. Okay, this lip gloss, I'm ready for it. This is Pistachio Shine On Lip Jelly from Tower 28, let's see. Oh, oh, that's nice. Okay, smells nice. Am I obsessed with it? Maybe it's with this look, not really. I don't know. I don't know guys. I don't know if I'm feeling it like that. I also flipped this over to give it like an over vibe, which I think I might have to go back to. I don't know, like I'm not really enthused by, do I even like it flipped over? I don't, if I say I don't know again, someone's gonna click off this video. This is not a vibe, this is not a look, this is just not a moment, I'm just not, like what is going on right now? But on camera it looks like I'm wearing a cap. I don't understand. The face isn't doing what it usually does. This side naturally is always better. Um, this is the skin. So in terms of skin, what we use today, to prime Milk Hydro Grip, I still would say this is better. 
Fenty, so the name of this is actually Pro Filter Instant Retouch because I know a lot of people get confused because there's three different Fenty primers. So this is Instant Retouch Primer. So there's a hydrating one and one that's super matte and then this is in the middle, this is called Soft Matte. Instant Retouch, Fenty Beauty Primer, way better than this. Yo, it, it bodies this, I'm not gonna lie. Old school times, I used to like Hydro Grip, but do I like the way that all the products are sat on top of it? No. See texture, you can see skin, and I know skin has texture, guys. I know skin has texture, but sometimes I just want my canvas to look as flawless as, you know, humanly possible, and these two really do that. I still use this today, so that's how you know that this is really the kicker, because I still use the airbrush spray, but clearly it's the Fenty Soft Matte that really takes it you know, where it needs to go. I'm giving you a quick rundown while I have you up close and you can see everything. Ooh, am I gonna regret doing this? Woo, probably. <laughs> the NARS foundations, yeah. I feel like most people already, probably already have this, I'm coming low, but I've got backup, thank God. And then the light reflecting. Give it a try, get a tester, especially if you're someone that you feel like, damn. If you're someone that you feel you need coverage in some areas, but not necessarily full, full coverage, Beat down, especially with the spring summer coming, I think it is a really nice one. Maybe to wear to work, maybe to wear for the evening. It's very versatile. It's even been contaminated already. I'm here to add more. These lifter glosses, you guys are sleeping. The lifter glosses from May Maybelline. This is in the shade Ice. And it's just like a really super light pink. Light, light pink, but these are banging. Banging. Anyways, what else new do we use today? This, I actually need to try and use this again. What saved the base. I think this actually maybe gave a soft finish. What does it say? Keeping your makeup in place, it gave a nice filter effect to the face, but I need to try it again because it was looking a bit, and then I used that and I was like, oh, I like this. The blushes from Huda. I feel like a fool talking about cream blushes because I more than likely always go over top with a powder brush anyway, a powder blush. So yeah, ABH liners. Chestnut and cork are better in terms of colouring. I didn't use them long enough to assess the formula, but in terms of the colour tone, if you like more true brown, you'll like cork and chestnut. These, I don't know, they're just a bit off for me. It's like they're almost too, uh, either too warm tone or too cool tone. I can't make this distinction right now, but I think they're a bit too warm. This was nice, this Tower 28. I wanna say this is affordable. I also don't know, but I have a feeling it is. So if it is, this is a very good gloss. Two more. So the one that I mentioned earlier is, if there's no spark in the beginning, is it worth it? This is individual preferences, honestly, guys. Like, yeah, if there's someone that's giving you a spark, obviously pay attention to that, focus on that. But also don't write someone off just because there's not a spark. Sometimes it's just getting comfortable with each other, build that kind of spark. Sometimes some people have it off the bat, but I don't think there's necessarily like a right or wrong way. So yeah. I think I pretty much, I was gonna explain more, but I think I pretty much said everything that I needed to say. Planning on moving in with my boyfriend when I start uni, am I restricting myself? Hmm, I wouldn't say necessarily that you are restricting yourself, but depending on your relationship, genuinely, I wouldn't tell anyone to move to uni and live with their boyfriend, just because uni is such a, it's such a time to, for you to really discover yourself and discover like what you love. Um, and of course you can do that with a boyfriend as well, but there's something that comes exploring that in your oneness and not living with your boyfriend. Make a group of friends and you wanna host something in your flat or you wanna host something at yours. Consider whether he's gonna have friends around as well or whether he's in a space to have people over the flat. Sometimes it's just nice to have your own space, do your own thing. You still have your man there, you still have your friends there, you can have people at yours, you can go to your man, so he can come to you. If you're asking me you should do it, no. but. You're gonna do what you're gonna do. I don't think you should live with a boyfriend at uni. I don't think you should live with a boyfriend at first year, definitely not. If you wanna live with your boyfriend and other friends in like second and third, you know when people, you know, they get relationships in first year and then they, in second year, then they live with their friends and also their boyfriend or girlfriend happens to be part of it. Uni is such a good time to just navigate you. First time that you're not in your parents' house, the first time that you're allowed into the world on your own, explored me in that kind of new environment without the attachment of him. I don't know, I just think there's so many more positives that come out of living on your own. And not to say that there's a bag of negatives that come out with living someone because you can have the best time ever. Me as your big sis, live on your own. Live on your own or live with other people, but do not live with your significant other in uni, especially not in freshers. 
no, 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 no. Okay, and that is the end of today's video. Yes, I have switched back to the middle. The middle, it just makes so much more sense. Like, look how much nicer it frames my face. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you loved it. I hope you loved the chatty bit. Let me know if you'd prefer in the future for me to either just do the girl talk or just do the try new products because I think maybe doing both in one video is a bit much. Maybe both in one video is a bit much. I don't know. You guys let me know. I hope you loved it. I was gonna say if you want a hair tutorial, but I haven't got one for you. I'm just looking in the mirror like, I cannot believe this. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.